Welcome everybody to Transition Clarity and we are happy to present Authentic Conversations. And today our guest is Tamara Richards, Richmond, sorry, I apologize for that. And she is the host of Stroke Diva Fabulous Show. And I was honored to be a guest on her show last year. And now it's our turn to have her on our show. And she's also um, the official podcaster for Grow Your Business. And that's where we found each other. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Adele, for having me on the show. It's such a pleasure and such an honor. Thank you so much. And thank you for being on the Stroke Diva Fabulous show. We had a great it was, time. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And so um, I just want to start back. Like, So we'll get to where you are today with this podcast and how you got there but like who are you growing up like what were your ambitions what were you, who did you want to be okay this is really funny and when I look at my old uh high school re high school book it says I wanted to be a model so when I oh. was <laughs> a professional model. When I was uh, 15 or 16, I went to modeling school and it was John Robert Powers and uh, fell in love with fashion and beauty and, uh, and did just like little, little shows here and there. Um, probably by in my twenties, I was a modeling instructor. And so that was what I wanted to do. And it's so funny because when I look back, I see my friends that wanted to be accountants and lawyers and doctors. And I was like, a professional model. That's what I wanted. That's awesome. <laughs> well, and it's funny because as as I've known you um, over the last you know year, it's like you do have that that way of carrying yourself. Oh, right? thank you. And it's, and it's funny because even if people just go to do modeling for self-esteem or, or whatever, like you're taught how to carry, you're taught how to present your face. So it's always in the best, you know, yeah. So that's interesting. Um, so obviously you've transitioned further than model. Yes. And so what was your career like? Well, I actually uh, went to the University of Maryland and my uh, major was radio, television, and film. And uh, of course, after school, I wasn't like getting any jobs. So I said, well, let me start working on my master's, you know, for business administration. Um, but then I started working for a company and I started moving around from Michigan to Atlanta to Virginia and uh, and back to Maryland. And so um, during that time, um, we have a local station here, WPFW, it's actually in DC. And I had, I was their public awareness calendar person. So even though I wasn't in my major, I was still, well, I kind of was <laughs> because um, when I was in town, I was doing that show. Um, but just, you know, full circle back now, that's, that's what I'm doing. But my, um, I worked for Nordstrom for about 10 years and, um, and during my, my 10th year, you know, I started getting sick and I know we'll, we'll talk about that at some mm -hmm. later time. Um, but so I am back to my major, if that makes sense, <laughs> a roundabout <Absolutely>. way. <laughs> podcasting radio whatever same thing <laughs> right it's like you know same and, thing. and and the thing like it's interesting before because before we started the call like we were talking about all oh, the tech of everything and yes. and what platforms are easier to use right and so you have a bit of understanding of the tech like the understanding of like what it entails to produce a show or to um, you know, do all that where I'm like, huh? I have no <laughs> idea, right? And so it's like the fact that I get anything out, I'm excited because right. it's it's technology is catching up to the fact like you don't need to know it all. Yes, to become an expert. 
Absolutely. And I definitely don't. I still have, you know, there, there's, there's a show where, you know, like last week, my camera, I can get my camera on, <laughs> you know, sometimes as, you know, with our show, the audio, there's something with the audio, um, you know, it, it's tech. And I think most people are understanding now because, you know, whenever you get on a Zoom call, you know, there's someone that can't get on. So it's just, you know, you just have to give people some grace because uh, technology, you know, has its own mind. <laughs> well, and it's interesting because I'm all about getting the story told, right? Yes. And my tech has been, no one can hear me. <laughs> I'm like, What? How am I supposed to how am I supposed to get people's story if they can't hear me ask the question? And I go, okay, let's play, have a like this is the joke, whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> I totally do, get it. Right? I totally get it. I am not tech savvy at all. And it takes me hours um to prepare for a show before, during, and after. It takes me a long time to get it published so I understand completely that's interesting so <laughs> you were talking about around the 10-year mark at Nordstrom's and how health came in do you want to share a bit about that and like how yeah. that started to make you realize like you are in a transition what is this transition looking like Right. And, you know, Adele, you used the, the perfect word transition um, because my life was so busy, you know, with work and uh, church and family and friends. And I, you know, I traveled a lot for work and um, I worked a lot of hours. And so life was super, super busy. And, you know, I just have to chalk it up to in 2004, um, the universe was maybe telling me to, to slow down because uh, I was always out and about doing something. <laughs> and so in 2004, I started getting sick. And uh, I think I was in California and my doctor called and she's like, you know, I'm seeing something going on with your thyroid. And I was like, okay. So I, you know, came home and, uh, you know, started running these tests on the thyroid. And then a couple months later, um, I was having trouble walking and breathing. And uh, so I oh, wow. met with a lot of doctors during that time. And so this like, oh, well, you might have, um, what was it? Uh, you might have tuberculosis or you might have lupus. And actually after bouts and months of testing, it turned out to be sarcoidosis, which is something um, it can affect you in every area of the body. And it's, it's really has to do with your, um, I'm trying to think of the, the correct word. It's really a lot of inflammation in different okay. parts of the body. Um, and now you hear celebrities that have it like uh, Bernie Mac and Bernie Mac, you know, he died from it. Um, Tisha Campbell, there's celebrities now, you know, back in 2004, it still wasn't known. It's still not really known today, even for some doctors, but it really um, attacks women, black women, women of color, uh, women of Eastern European descent, I believe. And um, it's something that they say there's no cure for, you know, you just kind of work with it with medication, diet, exercise, all of that stuff. So um, it got pretty bad for me because it was, for me, mimicking like lupus with uh, the breathing. And so after a couple of months, I, you know, I, I left Nordstrom, I actually started working for another company. I said, well, if I worked for, it was White House Black Market. I said, you know, if I work here, because of course I'm still doing fashion. Um, and, you know, at Nordstrom, I was a buyer and uh, at White House Black Market, I was managing. And I said, maybe if I just do something on a smaller scale, mm -hmm. then, you know, things won't be as bad. But my work ethic is a serious work ethic. So that wasn't helping. So after about two or three months, I was sicker than I was before. <laughs> yeah. And 
I just said to myself, you know, let me just take some time, you know, let me just take some time and um, just kind of chill, get myself together, you know, get healthy and then go back to work. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, within a, a month or two, or maybe even three later, um, I had a stroke. And so I was 37 at the time. Wow. And um, the whole week before I was having tests done because of the, the sarcoidosis and my head was hurting. And I kept saying, you know, I never really get headaches like this before. And for about three days straight, I had severe headaches. I mean, just pain that you you can't even imagine. And I you know, I went to the to the emergency room and they said, oh, well, you know, you just have migraines. And, you know, I didn't know that at the time when I was there that I was vomiting and um, I had I was showing all these signs. But at 37, they're not looking for someone who's having a stroke, you know. Wow. Um, so yeah. a couple days later, you know, I, I have the stroke. I started um, I can remember. So it was 2004. I was watching Denzel Washington's Man on Fire. Mm -hmm. And I'm a night owl. So it's about two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And I go to uh, check my emails. And I was going to email a friend and um, I couldn't read or write. But I was just like, oh, wow, you really are tired because you mm -hmm. can't read or write. Well, it is, you know. Realizing that this was a stroke. Not, not even. I'm just like, okay, well, I am tired. That was a good movie. <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll try and email my friend. I'll email her tomorrow. I'm just going to go to sleep. And, you know, 18 hours later, um, my apartment door burst open. You know, I see these men, they're slapping me. Are you okay? I see my aunt, she's there, she's crying. Um, and I, I think there were other family members with her. I know my phone had been ringing off the hook. And so I was like, why is everyone calling me? And the friend that I went to send the email with, I heard her knocking on my door prior before them, they burst they burst in. And I was like, why is she, does she know what time it is? Why is she yeah. knocking on the door at this time of night? So my mind, I'm having conversations in my mind. And not realizing that all this time had passed. Not knowing 18 hours had passed. And I could, you know, hear things. And of course, everyone knew I was sick. My family, everyone, my family, my friends, um, everyone knew I was sick. They knew I was at home. And the only reason I wasn't home is if I was going to the grocery store or going to the doctor, um, because I was really barely walking. Um, so they knew, uh, especially with my mom and my aunt and uh, my grandmother, you know, we talked every night. And so um, everyone knew that I had an appointment the next day and, you know, really don't call me early in the morning because, you know, I'm going to be sleeping <laughs> yeah. except for, you know, I had an appointment, I think at 12 or whatever. And of course I never made the appointment. And uh, once everyone started calling, they knew that. Uh, something was wrong. Wow, but I mean, like, just we'll just take a breather there because, like, talk about having a support system. Yes, that was aware enough to say, wait a minute, like, because I know, I know, in my own life, eighteen hours, like, no one would ever know that I was gone. Like, right? I mean, there can it's be scary. A week it, it can be a week, easy a week before I don't talk to anybody. Wow. Right? yeah and my, so, <laughs> my family doesn't roll like that <laughs> no it's not it's not that we don't roll like that it's just like yeah we like you know or like if a phone call happens like it doesn't mean I'm getting back to you right away because like well I got podcasts to do I got you know like I'm busy so I'll right. get back to you when I can right but yeah. so yeah so kudos to your family and friends to be yeah so on top of it for you and, and because I was sick, you know, everyone was always checking, you yeah. know, I mean, that, 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 that makes the difference when I say, you know, roll like that, because, um, you know, everyone knew I was sick. So everyone was checking on me all the time. And from what I understand of um, strokes, depending on the severity is it has to like the medication or whatever they do has to be done within a certain time frame three hours 
or you might not get your voice and everything done. Right. So the fact that it was 18 hours and you're sitting here talking, functioning, like, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a blessing because it's really, you know, within three hours. Um, and so, you know, I had a bleed on the left side of my brain. And so I did, you know, therapy, you know, physical therapy, speech therapy, eye therapy, cognitive therapy, occupational therapy. Yeah. Um, I had good health care. You know, of course, I had my family and my friends. I had a, you know, a tribe, a support system. Um, but it's really, you know, if you don't have that, because I do know people that have had strokes and the outcome has been completely different if you, you don't have so much of what you need already in place. It makes a difference. And, and I still have, you know, I still have many deficits. Um, the, the one thing is that uh, being engaged with folks online, that has helped me tremendously because I still have, um, you know, deficits with my vision, with my memory, and, um, you know, I can, I can have a conversation with you, but it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. <laughs> oh, okay. For sure. Oh, I, I, yeah. Because I remember when we first started talking, I could, I could hear the pregnant pause. I was like, yes, oh, yes. Right? You said that. Because I, I've had many people in my life who have had strokes and it's like, and it's interesting because even talking with you right now, I have naturally slowed down my speech. Wow! Because well, you're you're intuitive like that. Well, I know, but I I just noticed it right now when I was like, interesting, because I'm going, why am I talking so slow? Because the person on this call with me needs the pregnant pause to be able to catch the words absolutely absolutely if anything if anyone watching this podcast after is to understand that if your loved one has had a stroke or even a tia it's slowing down everything as if you're talking to a child mm -hmm. And it makes it, and, you know, and of course I, I didn't even pick up on it until you just said it, but it mm -hmm. definitely makes sense and it makes it easier. I guess it's, it's why it's easy for me to, uh, to talk to you because you, you know, you know that. Well, and it's also yeah. like in my case, like it makes me cognizant of, well, who are you talking to so fast? Because even yourself is like the words are just coming out so fast. Are you even understanding what you just said? And sometimes mm -hmm. I go, I have no idea what I just said. Did anyone catch it? <laughs> right? And so it's like, and you know, I mean, um, like I know when I used to work in corporate, it was just like I'd have 500 ideas in my head and then they'd all end up on the boardroom. And I'd get the blank stares from everyone. I'm like, hmm, that didn't come out right, did it? <laughs> right and so then it takes me back to say well how can i com communicate clearly effectively that we actually get the outcome that everybody's wanting mm. right absolutely. And, absolutely and on the good and bad side like one of my dearest friends when she 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 didn't have a full-blown stroke at first but she had minor tia Mm -hmm. yeah I've had those too well I know oh. well and so that's where like because I'd be talking to her and I and she'd just glaze over and I'm like am I talking too fast because it was never like it wasn't that the subject wasn't what she knew and so yeah so it's just being cognitive of who you're talking to where mm -hmm. you're talking right so one-on-one -on -one, i understand it's easier 
so yeah. you get in a room. Your brain a little bit more to, challenging. Yeah, your brain's trying to catch everything instead of staying focused on the conversation. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely true. And I'm like, and even a little tool like this for me was when I go to a restaurant or I'm in a in a room, I have to be able to see the door. And people are like, why? And I said, because my brain works so fast. I have to see all that's going on for in order to hear the person in front of me. Interesting. If I'm flipped, I don't hear anything that you're saying, you know, and I'm here, I'm trying to understand the whole room because I can't see it. Interesting. Right? Interesting. Have you always been that way or has that been since? Well, this is, I, I guess so. I, it's just later in life that I, I understood it. Mm. And it wasn't until someone said, why do you always have to sit like facing the door? And I'm like, I don't know. And so I said, I don't know. Okay. Well, and we switched, right? I'm like, whatever, no big deal. And then it's like, okay, switch. And I go, why? You're not hearing anything I'm saying. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I'm here. And it, and it wasn't like, until somebody made me question it, I didn't understand. Right. Right. And it's just probably like with you, right? It's like, until you understand that I want to speak with you, but can we slow it down? Right. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm always in my head, I'm always searching for words. I'm searching for context. I'm searching for meaning. You know, there's, I'm having a conversation with someone, but there's a lot going on in my head to have a conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if people are aware of that, that, um, because I mean, as, as, I don't know what you call them, like the senior people. Mm -hmm. um, if people just realize like in, in communication, right? Like treat everyone either as the five-year-old who's starting to learn mm -hmm. or the 85-year-old who has a lot of knowledge, but their computer runs a bit slower, that slow down so they can get all the wheels going and it's like, oh, you're talking about that. Great. And then you'll get a whole beautiful story from both both ends. Right. Absolutely. But it's the middle part that we think we have to go at 110 miles an hour and the speed limit 60. <laughs> I totally, I totally get that it. Helping. Right. 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 I totally understand it and you just and you don't know um if someone's had a, a a brain injury uh so it's just really just being mindful of how you treat people because you just well, don't know someone's I mean, story i think it's i think you nailed it with being mindful of who the person is in front of you mm -hmm. whether it's brain injury whether it's mental illness whether it's they just think differently they take right. time to process. Absolutely. Because, you know, there's still just uh, simple things that are challenging and, and hard uh, uh, to do. Mm -hmm. but, okay, so let's, sorry, but I just, like, I want, I want to have, like, because, I mean, I think you're doing amazing. Yes, I am. Right? Thank you. And mm -hmm. so here you are, 37 years old the prime of your life and you go what did this happen <laughs> how is my life changing yeah and and i and you're very very grateful for the for the care and the support you had like especially in the us that you had a good medical plan absolutely right it makes it makes a difference yeah, because we don't even want to think of what would have happened if you didn't. So, so with sarcoidosis, um, is it manageable? Like, what are symptoms that show up for it? Like, it is. Like stroke happens. 
Yeah, it is. It is. It is manageable um, with medication, and it goes. Uh, for me, it goes in and out of remission, and so there are little nodules um, that kind of show up in my eye area, my nose, and of course, it has um, done a lot of damage uh, to uh, the lung, the lung area, um, and you know, it's even giving me some arthritis. <laughs> But uh, it is it is manageable with uh, medication, and as mentioned, um, you know it, it it goes in and out. And for some people um, that have it, it completely goes away. So it's uh, it's just one of those things that um, I think they found it in the eighteen hundreds, but still not a lot of. I mean, there is a a um, the Sarcoidosis Foundation. So, but there's still not a lot of resources. I think it's not one of those things where you know they're pouring money into uh, resources to to find you know the so-called cure. But um, it's, and I don't want to say it's rare, but it's still something that a lot of people don't know about. Right. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a lot. It's still not common, maybe, maybe commonly not known. Common in white folk. <laughs> yeah. But I believe, I, well, I want to say, I think I said Eastern European women, I think. Yeah. But yeah, but not, not very yeah. common, I don't think, in anyone else. I know definitely for Black women, um, women of color uh but there you know men get it too. i mean different people get it but well, and, but that's I guess you're more genetically maybe more prone towards it and it's interesting yeah. because um i've just i've been on the the rabbit hole of histamines and mm -hmm. how different foods cause different things in histamines and and it's like and i also am fascinated with the genealogy right mm -hmm. Because I was I was listening to a podcast of of a energy healer who talked about oh no like don't worry about the foods you eat today go back six seven ten generations yes. where were they eating food that's the foods you need to go before any industrial came in yes and she yeah. said like for instance like she went back ten generations and and she's actually Irish descent but because there's so many generations in between she didn't even figure it Irish played anything into her makeup mm -hmm. right interesting and she's like potatoes are awesome for me I never ate them because we were told they're bad and she wow. said she added potatoes into her diet and her diet started flourishing because she went further far enough back into the history of pre, you know, let's make the world better, which is actually killing us. <laughs> right. <laughs> and definitely diet and exercise play a big role in it. Well, yeah. Sure. And so like, I'm like, I'm looking at the histamines and I'm like, so I spent a year trying to figure out how to drink lemon and lime water because it's good for your body to wake it up in the morning. Mm -hmm. I can't eat lemon or lime. I can't have citrus. It inflames my body with histamines. Interesting. <laughs> and you're going, wow, that makes sense. So here I force myself to learn how to drink this stuff and I'm not supposed to be drinking it. <laughs> right? And so it's like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> and so, you know, because I mean, like you, we we all are on these like, journeys of self-discovery and and transitioning our bodies and in, into making them the healthiest best for us at the time and i thought well i'm doing all this great stuff i'm eating all this great stuff and it's like no you're not <laughs> like you are compounding the histamine issue and i'm like awesome and i mean but that's good that you were able to 
through that deep dive into figuring it out. Yeah, I definitely know that uh, my health could be better with a better diet and exercise. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm I mean, sure. but, but it's only like, like for me, I've been on this since the day I was born, right? Like mm. I, I was, I was a baby that was underweight, was told to feed her. If she, if like feed her, just keep feeding her. Well, then I'm like, I tease my mom saying, I think you forgot to stop feeding me right because I was, I was a heavier kid but I was very very active right mm -hmm. and then and then as an adult I'm like I can't live like this and then I went to different specialists like you you find what you need when you need it right just like right. you right what do you mean my thyroid's off what do you like so you're you, like until you know something is wrong you keep going but the number one thing with the thyroid is that it's the organ that regulates all of our body Right? Yes. So when you think about your stroke, that stroke probably was starting to come before you even knew about your thyroid. And I mean, that is possible because yeah. up until that year, uh, you know, always had busy enjoying life. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, and I was, you know, I was tired a lot because I was so busy and so active. Um but it was just, you know, that year, everything just came. Yeah. But, just came but to head. looking back, right? Mm -hmm. You were tired mm -hmm. more so because your thyroid wasn't keeping up. Right. And I hadn't had, um, you know, I hadn't had that issue before. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because I have thyroid stuff too. And so now it's like... Um, like even out walking, I'll be like rubbing my throat, rubbing my throat. <laughs> Good. How are you doing? Are we doing okay? <laughs> right? Like you gotta keep everything working. Okay, we'll just give you some love out here. <laughs> right? I, I, I to, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> well, I like, that. like if you if you know if you know the mechanics of the body, uh -huh. right? Like uh -huh. all your head stuff like whether it's communication or anything, must go through the thyroid to make your arm work, to make your kidneys work, to make, right? And vice versa. So your head says to your bladder, we have to go to the bathroom. Then your bladder has to go, I think I got a signal. Oh, I think it's saying this. So then it goes all the way up through your thyroid again to say to your brain, okay, got it. Physically start moving the body towards going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. You start saying, oh. well, the thyroid's nothing. It's just a little nodule. Like, no, it is the computer. It is the mega system of the body. Right? Wow. You start having issues with that. It's like your computer short circuiting, just short circuiting. Sometimes it'll just turn off. Right? That is really interesting. Yeah. That it's, is it's interesting, really but it makes complete sense. And my experience is either doctors underestimate the thyroid or they just blanket you with take thyroid medication. Right. And yeah. Well, it's... well, your levels are whatever. And I'm like, but you know what? If you looked at the blood test levels from 40 years ago, they're so dramatically changed. Because 40 years ago, our blood pressure was like normal. Like you, everyone strived for 80, 120 over 80. Now they want 110 over 70. It's like, why? Because people are running at 130 over 90 or higher. So mm -hmm. the higher we go in our blood pressure, the lower they want the numbers. Guess what? That's pushing pharmaceuticals. Who wins with pharmaceuticals? Not us. Not, not, not the patient <laughs> for sure, for sure. And it's, 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 I mean, it's so true. Mm -hmm. so true. I mean, it's the food we eat. It's the, um, the environments in which we live. Mm -hmm. It all just makes such a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that's where the histamine thing came too, right? Because um, like you're saying, okay, but I'm eating healthy, right? 
Mm -hmm. yeah, at that time, I was. <laughs> well, no, but I'm just saying, you're eating healthy. Well, what's healthy? Right. Right? Like, people say, oh, eat an egg a day, and I go, well, that's poison to my body. Right? Hmm. Okay, so am I eating healthy? And it's like, well, you know, I'm going to say, like, how that one lady was like, well, I can't eat potatoes. But to her body, it's like the gold that keeps her functioning. Or to my body, it's like, take it, leave it. It makes no difference. Right. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. And so, like, I think the whole industry of our health needs to change. And as the patient, whoever's on the other side, whether it's nutrition, whether it's doctor, whether it's physical, they need to pay attention to who they have in front of them than, well, this is what the stats say. Because stats can be manipulated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the one thing I was blessed, um, most of the doctors that I had before, mm -hmm. uh, I had them before I was sick. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I was just blessed with doctors that really know me and I still have them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I picked up some new ones along the way, but uh, I keep them for a really long time and um, and make sure that we are having those conversations mm -hmm. because, um, yeah, it's important. So let's, let's go back to, okay, the stroke is over. You're now on your way to recovery. Mm -hmm. How did the podcast come about? How did how did your love of, of you know what you went to school start showing up again? So yeah, and you know I didn't think that I would ever get back to it, but um, my dear friend, uh, my sorority sister Ananda Leek, and she's anandaleek.com. You can check her out. All the wonderful things she does. Uh, Ananda, she was one of the first people on Facebook. She's always been into social media <laughs> since its <Okay>. inception. <laughs> and and uh, she would go to, there was a conference, it was called Blogalicious for um, women of color. And um, I was, you know, can I go to that conference with you, you know, one year to see what all this blogging is all about? And this was 2011 and uh, she was like sure and so um you know I go to the conference I, I learn about all these bloggers and you know what it all means and you know and Ananda has been doing this for you know she's been doing it for a while yeah. and uh she had a blog called um well she well she had BAP uh radio and she had present, well, and she had a series called Present Moment Living. I may be getting this all mixed up. Mm -hmm. That's okay. but... <laughs> she had some shows. <laughs> she had some shows. And so she had me as a correspondent for her present living. So I would, you know, do some research and um, pick a topic on living in the present and do it on her show. And, um, and then she, and we did the conference and as I'm, as I'm saying, telling you the story now, I think I'm getting everything mixed up, but that's okay. Um, bottom line is Ananda was like, you know, Katie, let's get you back into doing radio and, and tell radio and, and well, I'll get to TV later, but radio, radio. let's get back to doing that. And I was like, okay. So, you know, I do her show and then she came up with um she says you, know, you had the stroke but you're still fabulous so um she got came up the whole concept for the stroke diva fabulous show and uh she's like you know we're gonna use talk shoe because she was using talk shoe um as a platform and uh said, we'll do it every month and i'll be your producer for like a year and after that year you can do it on your own you can get your guests but you know I'll start the call and you know I'll tweet about it you know I'll do all the stuff that a producer does and I was like great so it um it forced me to you know get online mm -hmm. uh go to 
the conferences or reach out to people online, have them on the show. And so after the year was up, you know, I was like, wow, this is great. I can still have conversations with people. You know, for the first couple of years, I always told everybody, okay, you know, I've, I've had a stroke. I may forget. I might repeat. I mean, you know, all these things. And people were understanding and said, it's okay. You know, I'll do the show. And um, after the year was up, her father, uh, Dr. John Leake, was my producer for a couple of months because uh, John is like that. He likes to be in the know. And so he was my producer for a couple of months. And after that, uh, I started doing it on my own. But it started working for me as part of my cognitive therapy because I had to do research. You know, I had to find people. I had to do research. Um, I had to learn how to uh, be able to do it online and upload it and post it and, you know, share it and uh i have a little confession now because i was uh, like comparing my show to yours i'm like but hers is so professional <laughs> you had you had some great teachers i did i did i'm I mean, just like whatever i've been told to do this i'm throwing it up there right because when i don't I listen did. when i don't listen to the path i get smacked and i'm right. i'm just listening right? and the thing is is even you know when i had to start doing it by myself, you know, I was messing up like all the time. <laughs> you know, you messing so up with me. you in your perfection of imperfection. Right. Well, you know, I was learning. I, I was learning and still and still learning. I still, you know, things go haywire uh here and there um when I'm trying to do the when I'm trying to do the show. So uh still still learning, but that first year was was critical um and you know and and now it's something different you know before I used to always send out the emails and send out you know uh you know I've I've changed some over over the years um and, and because you know with technology you can't be rigid you know you, some things you just have to to let go and so I was like I I do what I do you know, um, as much as I can. And like you said, if it's not perfect, it's not perfect, but it's done. <laughs> well, because, and I'm going to speak to that because there's so many of us that chose or didn't or whatever to do what we were asked to do for mm -hmm. our path of evolvement because mm -hmm. we didn't do it perfectly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I found, you know, people are understanding. And now, well, I mean... But, it, but it's not even about people. It's about, like, you know, you're from the church. It's like, God's already made us perfect. Right. Done. Right. Anything right. over and above is done. It's It's absolutely perfect. Absolutely. It's our it's our earthly ego, our earthly well, I you know, I messed up this and I didn't use the right word. It's like right all the garbage in our head that doesn't need to be talking. Absolutely. Right? Because the conversations Absolutely. in our heart, heart to heart yes. conversations are always perfect. Yes. Even and if the camera goes out, even if the mic goes out, <laughs> it's perfect. And, it's, and I think, you know, people just really want to share their stories. And I mm -hmm. feel that's, you know, what I'm I'm here to do, to just share stories. Um, because you never know where the conversation is going to go. I mean, I pretty much interview entrepreneurs, but um, I do have a focus on, uh, on women, especially. Um, because, you know, we do so much. <laughs> so um, I definitely love to highlight uh, women, whether they're in business or they're authors or speakers or, you know, I really just interview people from all walks of life. Um, whatever is interesting to me, uh, those are the folks that I, I reach out to and folks reach out to me. And so, um, you know, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey 
being able to to share because you just never know mm-hmm. who it's going who it's going to help. It definitely helps me for sure, um, but you just never know who else is listening. Um, as we were talking before the break, you know, one of my church members she listened to our podcast and yeah. uh, and wanted to reach out to you because you're doing just beautiful work. So kudos to you, Adele, kudos. Well, and it's, and it's interesting because um, as you say, working with the women and in the back of my head, it's always like, but the bet that the men need to be recognized too. Mm-hmm. Because yes. the men who are on their path doing the work and, and they're part of this evolution into this new world too. Yes. And um, and I'm I'm cognizant of I've predominantly had women on my show, <laughs> but I I'm all of a sudden going oh yeah that's the one a guy I should call oh there's another guy I should call right <laughs> because because yes like the women are rising but um, I'm also hearing men say she's so into her feminism. She won't allow me to be the husband. Wow. She's so into her feminism and and raising our kids feminist that I can't be dad. That is deep. Right? And so when you look at it that way, you're like, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, yes, be strong women. Like, yes, society has made us that we have to be bent. But we don't. Mm -hmm. Our loving, nurturing, caring, compassionate people can still get the job done as well, or if not better, than what the men had taught us. Yes. Because I remember, I mean, this could even be going back to Donahue days, right? Like, I mean, a long time. Remembering hearing that the struggle of retirement was the men had nowhere to come home to once they retired. Wow. Because they weren't there. Yeah. Those years working. Yeah. Right? And so now we're living longer and healthier and they want to retire and they have nowhere to come home to. So a lot of men have started figuring out how to cook. Yeah, that that's a that's an interesting story. That's right? yeah, that's, right. It's so, an interesting so, conversation to have. And so I'm like, oh, I don't have to cook every day. Done. <laughs> like, if you're showing up in my life to be my partner and you can cook, sweet. Right. I'll be your sous chef any day. <laughs> I'll do kicks and clean up, right? Because the hardest part of making the meal is figuring out what you're making, right? Right. Yeah. And so, and so when you think about like, so on this journey of, of health and recreating yourself and, and, you know, like, yeah, you used to make this kind of soup, but now look at this soup, look at how many different ingredients you can bring into this soup and how it's, it's fulfilling your life in a different way. Right. Yeah. And it's also like you had mentioned about because of the stroke, you're unable to drive. Yes. And and someone said it was the best thing they ever did was giving up their license because then they had that, oh, I can't fit in this friend. Oh, I got a phone. They're always fitting in because you like you're supporting each other to move forward in life. So instead of just saying, Oh, I'm running to the grocery store, I have my best friend take me to the grocery store and we're gonna have a great conversation while we pick up our groceries. Right. Think of the shit you have to in make that perspective. Mm-hmm. Instead of going, I'm alone all the time doing all these chores I can't stand. Me and my bestie are going grocery shopping together, and we're going to make amazing soup. And you, Adele, you just you know said that one of the key words is, you know, it's making mentally making the adjustments in your brain <laughs> on how you are going to look at a situation because I know I know with myself right like um, I 
did a lot of grocery shopping with my one friend. She didn't have a stroke, but she did other stuff. And she's like, I can't believe you like coming grocery shopping. And I said, well, to be honest with you, I don't. And she's like, then why do you do it? And I said, because I'm a, I'm a person, my love language is time. So if ah. this is how I get time, then we go grocery shopping. Love that. Love Would that. Would I prefer to do something fun? Sure. But that's not that's not where it's working out in our in our life right now. It's working out that we go grocery shopping. We have a bit of time after the groceries. It's all good. Because I'd rather have time with you than not see you. Wow. I love that. Okay. Yes. Love right. that. That is your love language. Yeah. And so like, and like, you know, one friend, like, you know, she's she's studying and she's trying to raise a kid. And she's like, oh my God. And I'm like, but I want to spend time with you. So while she's studying a bit, I'm getting dinner ready at her house. And then we have a family meal. So her son sees like we're all together, we get time, and I go see you. Hmm. Right, because the kids going to bed, she's going back studying. Like, I'm no, I'm no longer of service anymore, and the time has been met for my my quota. Right, and so we have to when 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 you know, and so as a transition coach, it's about looking at the current situation and seeing what needs to shift that all parties involved win. Like, would your friends prefer not taking you grocery shopping and rather taking you out for dinner and out to the clubs? And probably, but that's not mm -hmm. who you are. If they want to meet you where you are, they'll be glad to come take you grocery shopping. Absolutely, absolutely. It's nothing like a, it's nothing like having a village, even if it's just one person in your village. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's nothing like having um folks you know who surround you and understand you and love you to to do those things so well and I think I think like as horrible as the last three years have been <laughs> I I truly believe from what I'm seeing people are recognizing that the outside 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 isn't what's important absolutely right absolutely true it's about coming home to what does my heart want i just want to have a nice cup of tea with you whether it's on zoom whether it's in person it doesn't matter let's slow down let's stop burning our candles at five ends because they were never meant to burn at five ends and cherishing what we have together yeah i mean that's the big lesson <laughs> for the last three years yeah that is a and big And I mean, in so much so, like, you know, um, like even in the, some of the work I, I do, right? Like when people are going, well, I have no separation between home and family now because they've brought their home or their work into their home, right? The kids are all home. Everyone's home. Like, how do we have that separation? And so like now I'm starting to say, okay, so now things are opening up, things are like, where's that stuck energy in your home? Because my thing is about making your home your sanctuary, that when you go on holidays, you're going on because you want a different set of view. You're not leaving mm -hmm. chaos, you're leaving your sanctuary to see beautiful views, to come back to your sanctuary. But if your right. home is chaos, you're going on vacation, to get peace you don't get peace because before you even get walk in your door you're going to have that chaos now mm -hmm. so, right so it's shift it's it's shifting the energy of the home so you can be you so you can be at home in your heart and in your body so help me understand and the people listening what was the biggest ahas that you've learned over the last, whatever, 50 plus years? Uh, from this, you know, life yeah. thing. 
I mean, you know, the, I think that the biggest aha uh -huh is, well, I mean, there, there are a few. One, take care of yourself. <laughs> Mind, heart, body, spirit, soul, take care of yourself. Um, and at that time, I got to my uh, watch. <laughs> um, and when I stopped working, you know, all of my finances were, I stopped working because I had all of my finances in order. Um, so that made the transition easy. I had great health care. That made the transition easy. And, um, you know, of course, you, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a church member. So of course, I'm going to always say number one is, you know, God is good all the time. Um, so, you know, taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually are all in one. Um, and two, you know, all things, all things are possible because there was a time when they didn't think I would survive. You know, I would walk, I would talk, I would do all the things that I'm doing now. Um, so, you know, life is good. You know, mentally, you have to tell yourself that every day you have to believe it. Uh, to work through the challenges. And so um, still lots of challenges. And I choose to call it a challenge instead of hard and work and suffering. Um, because, you know, that energy that you put out there is really what's returned to you. <laughs> so I just like to say, I'm just transitioning through all my challenges. <laughs> Well, and, and words are important. Yes. Right? Because you can you can get stuck in the pain of your body or the pain of what has happened rather than saying, it's okay. I, I Instead of challenge, I use hiccups. Oh, look at those hiccups showing up. Awesome. <laughs> Let's move through them. Right? right. <laughs> as long as I keep breathing, we're good. Right? <laughs> right. Well, exactly. Yeah, because exactly. it's like, if we if we make mountains out of molehills, it stops us. It does. It does. Because the mountain's too daunting. But if you have a little speed bump, and then you have a little molehill, and then you have a you know right. And it's right. funny because um, that's the one thing I noticed when I've been traveling in the states is like like we have we have speed bumps, right? That are like hard. They wreck mm -hmm. the whole car, whatever. And I love the fact when I come into some of the states, like they just have the we what we nickname as the lazy cops. Like they're just like they slow you down, but they're nice and easy. The car doesn't shake. Like they just go nice and easy, right? And so it's like, yeah. So we have some lazy cops in our life. Like whatever, right? <laughs> it's not rattling us to crazy. It's you know, right? Right. Right. So, right. Um, and and I actually I actually I'll, I'll use I'm gonna use that little hiccups because you know the last couple of months I've you know had to go through lots and lots of testing um for you know more hiccups <laughs> so. but the only thing is is in our hiccups we don't hold our breath over them yes yes and 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 that's uh and that's that's key you know um acknowledge it and just try to um acknowledge it and work through it and and keeping sure. present, right? Exactly. Because keeping when when present. we're when we're not present, we're either in the fear of the past or the anxiety of the future. Right, and that is me most of the time. The anxiety present the moment living is <laughs> present moment living is is challenging uh, when you have um, when the past. And the present are just, you know, I mean, they don't, ex they don't exist anymore, but it is that present moment is, is yeah, key. But, but the present moment is where God is. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So to be in the, the present, present moment is just to take those deep breaths and just like, I am here. Absolutely. Or, well, you don't even have to say here. I am. I am. Yeah, I am. And that I am. in. I am. And then I you am. know you are aligned. Absolutely. Absolutely true. Yeah. Well, it's been sure. an absolute pleasure. 
Thank you, Adele, for having me. It hey, is a pleasure. I always, I always feel so much better after I talk to you. <laughs> we'll call anytime. Yeah. I always feel so, better after we talk. <laughs> so just as we're wrapping up here, if anyone wants to um, reach out to Tamara, her show is the Stroke Diva Fabulous Show. Yes, and it's on talkshoe.com. Um, well, I'm on Instagram, Kamaria, uh, Kamaria Fab Diva Show. Now I ought to know these things by heart. <laughs> Facebook, The Stroke Diva Fabulous Show, or Linktree, just uh, Kamaria Richmond. Okay. I ought, to have that, I ought to have that written in front of me so that, <laughs> so that I, I, I know it um, for sure, but I'm just going to check really quick. I think the okay, we'll get it all in the show notes for people. Okay, yeah. yeah. Linktree has everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Adele from Transition Clarity, and this has been an awesome conversation. It it has been awesome. Thank you so much, Adele. Thank you.